The purpose of this video is to build a better sum of digits program and we will update our prior sum of digits program uh, with a, a simpler version or a more elegant solution. Uh, first, if, we, if you remember, we had the sum of digits program where we just took the digits and kept on dividing the number and getting the modulus and adding that to the sum 10 times. But how do you know if the number is going to be 10 digits long or maybe it could be more than 10 digits long and it, this wouldn't work. Also, we're typing the same thing over and over again. That doesn't seem like a very smart thing to do. The whole purpose of computers is you shouldn't have to do that. So let's try going to Structurizer and building a better algorithm. So I'm going to go to Structurizer, start the executable, run it, and we will call this program Sum of Digits. So I'm going to double click on the the question marks and call this sum of digits. And in whenever you're doing an algorithm, especially in this 100 level course, you should be thinking to yourself immediately, what are the inputs that I'm going to need and what are the outputs going to be? So <clears throat> you might also be thinking about what are the variables I'm going to need in the middle. But we're going to we're going to need to have a number as an input that's the number that the digits we're going to sum. And then we're going to have to have an output, which is going to be a print statement at the end. The processing in the middle could be pretty simple. So let's just take this example. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get an input. So this, in, in the, the proper way of putting that in Instructorizer is input. In this case, it's going to be a variable called number. So that's how you uh, input a number. Uh, when we add a new line underneath it. You just click this this icon here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to initialize the sum to be zero. The way we do that is we do sum gets zero. And we use the less than sign and the minus to create an arrow. When we do that, it actually makes a little arrow in the NS chart. So now we have, we've got the number from the user or from wherever we got it from. And then we um, uh, set the sum to zero. At the very end, we're going to print the sum. But before we print it, we need to get the modulus of the number and add that to the sum. And we're going to do that over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a while statement, which is this one here. Whoa. And so the while statement, it should be while. Um, the number is greater than zero. So as long as the number is greater than zero, then we should keep on doing the modulus and dividing the number by zero. We don't actually put the word while in this while loop. We just put number greater than zero, and, and this form means that it's a while loop. So now, while that number is less than 0, we're going to have the sum become sum gets sum plus the number mod 10, number mod 10, which is just the last digit of the number. So that gives us the first part of this. Now we're going to create another line, and then we have to divide the number by 10. So number gets number divided by 10. And remember, this is integer division. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a comment in here. Rem recall that integer division uh, um, division removes fractions. So that's just a little comment that we can put there. So now we've finished our program. Basically, we get a number. Let's say it's 1, 2, 3. The sum gets 0. If the number is greater than 0, which it is, 1, 2, 3 is greater than 0, then the sum gets sum plus the number mod 10. Well, the, no the number mod 10, if, one, if the number is 1, 2, 3, that's going to be a 3. Then we divide the number by 10. And 1, 2, 3 divided by 10 would normally be 1, 2.3. 12.3, but because it's integer division, it would just be 1, 2, because it throws away the fraction. 
So you do that, and then that's the, that's a finished uh, program. However, we do need to add a line after this, and this will be print sum. We got to print the sum at the end, otherwise we won't know what the sum of the digits are. So this is a little more elegant solution. So I'll 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 save this on my desktop, and I will export it. We did this before. File export code Java, and we'll save that as sum of digits on my desktop also. So now let's go to the sum of digits Java. We're going to open this with edit with edit with Notepad plus plus, and here is the code. <clears throat> now you remember it's not completely perfect because uh, this print statement can't can't be like this. But our while was put in correctly. This is all correct. Even our comment was entered into the program. Kind of nice. And then we're going to put in here instead of print, we're going to put system system dot out dot print ln and that's going to be our sum now what I'm going to do oh yeah this input number also will not work and we can't we can't use sum without declaring it so here where it says declare and initialize local variables sum and number for sum we need to declare it so that's going to be int sum that's how we declare it and to initialize it we say equals zero and for number we say the same thing int number and we'll and we, in this case we need to get it from the um, user but we'll just say one two three four five six seven eight nine oh <clears throat> so then we do not use this here we're, we're initializing the number so we're not getting an input I'll show you in a second how to how to use scanner to get an input so here we have sum gets zero and while number is less than zero print this so this right here is code I'm going to copy and I'm going to put it into our NetBeans code so here I'm just going to print the, put this in our NetBeans code and I wonder if I can yes good thank goodness you can use the tab and shift tab to go forward and backward in the indentation so here I'm resetting the, the sum to zero and I'll reset the number to one two three four five six seven eight nine zero, oh. and we'll use this while statement and we'll print out through the same print statement here and let's see if this runs we should it should print out the number forty five twice and it does so now the question is what if I want to get um, a number from the user well what you can do is you can prompt the user you can say system dot out dot print line and open parentheses open quotes enter a number and uh, and what that does is it prints that sentence enter a number to the to the console this down here outputs the console then when you want to get the number you can say number gets um, system dot in sorry it's going to be we need to have a we need to have a scanner basically a scanner is a is a, a little routine that runs in the background that's waiting for some information in this case information from the keyboard so the way that we do that to, the way we declare a scanner first we have to make first we have to put and then we have to include the scanner um, up here so we'll say uh, include which is going to be import uh, java dot util dot scanner and that that grabs the information from the, for the, the scanner class which is the thing that we use to grab this input from and then <clears throat> we have to uh, create the scanner which will be, and you know what, yeah, it will be um, in here, we'll create the scanner, and we'll say uh, scanner, we'll declare a scanner, just like we declare an int or anything else, and we'll call the scanner sc, and that's going to be a new scanner object, and the, the, the int thing that's going to scan is system.in. 
which by default is the keyboard. So now we have a scanner called SC that exists now. And so now what we can do is we can, it says enter a number. Number is going to be sc.nextint. It's going to, it's going to grab an integer. And we'll say even here, enter an integer. So we're telling the user to enter an integer. And then here we're, we're, we're grabbing this integer. And I'm going to copy this here. And I'm going to paste it again here. We can use a function probably later, but we we'll, won't do that for now. And what I'm going to do is um, initialize the sum again. So here, here we have the sum and the number. Here, <coughs> I'm going to initialize the sum again to zero. <coughs> and then the now the user can enter in any number. So what this program is going to do now is it's going to print out 45. It's going to print out 45 again. Then it's going to print enter an integer. And then it's going to let you enter in the integer. And then it's going to print out the sum of the digits that, of the number you entered in. So let's try running this. So I run this. Oh, compile with errors. No, oh, there's a problem there. Where is the error? Here's the error. Number gets sc.nextint. Why is that an error? Okay. Hang on, I'm going to pause this and find out what the de deal is. Okay, I, uh, I found out what the problem is. I, I had put the scanner in the public class. I didn't put it inside of the um, main um, method and so that was a mistake. So basically you got to put the scanner here inside the main method and then run the scanner here. And now if I if I run it I get 45 45 and if I enter an integer like 1 2 3 I will get 6 the, the proper sum. So now you've seen how to create the code instructorizer and then it's a little bit more elegant code. Paste it into the NetBeans application then um, create the scanner to get information from the user and print that out. So that's a lot. So so that's so so hopefully you've seen how this works with sum of digits um, in a loop. And now I'm going to show you how to do this using submit J on the CSIS server in my next video.